I'm here today uh, on behalf of the New Hampshire Association of County Attorneys. Um, and we met yesterday um, and the forum, um, is everyone who made it for the forum, uh, voted unanimously to be in opposition of these uh, bills and legalizing marijuana. I um, have worked as a prosecutor for, I guess, 16 years now. Um, I've been on a wide variety of cases, uh, and in some way or another, most cases are touched or influenced by uh, people who have substance abuse problems or have used uh, some type of uh, drug or substance. At the county attorney's office, the medical examiners report to us and we reports of people overdose from drugs. Uh, and we've certainly seen overdoses, and far too many from heroin, from oxycontin, from opiate-based uh, drugs, uh, clonopin. Um, people who have substance abuse problems who are trying to get help, then overdose on methadone or suboxone. Um, we understand uh, how bad addictions are. Uh, I have uh, certainly heard of kids overdosing on marijuana. I have never seen an overdose death uh, from marijuana, uh, not once in the year. But that doesn't mean that marijuana is a soft drug, and it doesn't mean that marijuana isn't dangerous, uh, and it doesn't mean that we shouldn't discourage marijuana use. Uh, there are societal costs to people who uh, use illegal substances, well-documented harm uh, from using substances, uh, the, the ones that people consider more serious, uh, but I would also categorize marijuana in the same category. As our federal government does, as the FDA does, as the DEA does, as the President uh, his Office of National Drug Control Policy does. Marijuana remains uh, and is a Schedule One drug, which means it is a drug or substance that has a high potential uh, for abuse. Uh, it is a drug that uh, people can become addicted to. It is a drug that can lead to mental impairment, cognitive dysfunction, uh, mental health diseases uh, over the years. Now, a lot of people will come up and will we'll cite the studies or our opinions on things, and I appreciate that, that the Chief and a couple of the other speakers have uh, mentioned um, uh, documents and studies, and I've got a few that I'd like to hand out uh, with your permission. Um, the, the first one I'm going to hand over is from the Office of National Drug Control Policy. It lays out their position on the legalization of marijuana. Uh, the next one is from the National Association of Drug Court Professionals. And I'm someone who's been involved in a lot of cases, as I said, and I've been actively involved the last two years in drug court. I understand that we need to approach people with substance abuse issues that are in the criminal justice system differently. That we need to deal with their addictions, that we shouldn't just be locking people up. Uh, but what we do, when we recognize a lot of things that have uh, harmful effects, and alcohol and tobacco fall into that. As a society, uh, we should uh, try and discourage people from using those things. Uh, with the criminal justice system, it's not just discouraging, it's deterring. Uh, and so, uh, there are a number of ways to deter people. I think someone said the mere fact that something's criminal might deter someone from doing it. It's not always uh, that they are incarcerated or the actual act of incarcerating them, uh, but they um, know that it could be a crime, uh, and it deters them, it certainly limits the uh, supply. So, I passed those around. Uh, I can actually have one final one, which is the position statement of the National Association. Yeah. Yeah. But the drug for you. Um, and it dealt with people with addictions for a long time. And it was very uh, behind and motivated in terms of directing people out of the criminal justice system who have addictions. But they are opposed to uh, legalizing marijuana. And people are going to come up here and you're going to wonder, you know, well, if we have a different president, will there be a different position? Or do we as a group, you as a group, have time to bring in all the experts that are available to talk about all the studies that have happened? And I would submit to you that the uh, first so document that I sent to the uh, executive office, the president's office of national drug control policy, are people who have sat for hours and hours, days and days, weeks and weeks, year after year, and listened to experts in this area. And it doesn't matter whether it's a Republican in the White House or a Democrat in the White House. Their position has not changed. Their position has not changed. And what they tell you in that forum is it lists the problems that are associated with marijuana use, the problems that are seen with long-term marijuana use, and the policy uh, that they believe is sound that we should continue to uh, criminalize it uh, and do whatever we can to keep it away from kids. And as I said, you know, I think someone mentioned before, there are a lot of commercials that make alcohol look really nice uh, to kids. We should be trying to discourage things that, that result in so many uh, terrible uh, costs to society. And particularly, you'll see in those documents during the adolescent stages, we all know. Uh, that, that it's very harmful to kids in the long run to be using any of these things when they're young. Uh, and while adults, uh, you know, from a freedom standpoint, should be able to harm themselves if they want, 
uh, and that's some argument that people are saying. Uh, my God, one thing we shouldn't be doing, uh, with all due respect, Representative, is ever looking at children and saying, you've got something to look forward to when you're old enough to use these substances that we all know are so harmful. I do want to briefly address a couple of things that I think were, were, were covered, and I would also like to dispel the myth that there are vast resources being spent uh, incarcerating people on marijuana. Uh, how many people are in the state prison for marijuana possession? Zero. Because in New Hampshire, it's a felony. You can't go to prison for that. How many people are in the House of Corrections? Uh, we heard one person say two. Uh, we don't have any people in there for marijuana possession. I would submit to you, it's not their first offense. Uh, and it might be a probation violation that was related to using marijuana. We're not, we're not spending a lot of money uh, prosecuting marijuana possession charges. We are seeing a lot of cases where someone is facing another charge and they also have marijuana. And it might be that more serious charges reduced and they serve a sentence on marijuana because people involved in the system said, let's not settle this kid with a felony. Let's have the option of uh, just convicting him on the misdemeanor marijuana. Uh, simple fact of the matter is a lot of people who commit crimes also have marijuana on them. Uh, but the police aren't spending a lot of time running around tracking down people who possess marijuana. It just happens that a lot of people they arrest for crimes have marijuana on uh, them. And so you see that additional charge. So uh, that's one of the, the, the goals here uh, was to uh, reduce the cost of the system. What would the effect of legalization be from the Office of National Drug Control Policy? Uh, obviously it would increase availability. Someone said there's a 6,000% markup for marijuana right now. Imagine if people got it for what it costs or just ruined it in their own house. Uh, how available is it going to be then? Uh, look at the chart uh, that's from the Office of National Drug Control Policy and it shows you uh, the, um, uh, on the second page, uh, use in the general population of alcohol, cigarettes, and marijuana is very low. And they believe that if you increase the availability of marijuana, uh, you might see as much use. And with that, you would have a corresponding number of problems. So that means with alcohol, we know it has so many problems, and people have said that over and over, but it's, you know, isn't alcohol worse than marijuana? We would have a corresponding number of problems, and that includes uh, you know, people with the, the, the issues that need to be treated, uh, the DWIs, and so forth. The softening attitudes that have been seen just around the country where people have been told this medical marijuana is acceptable. Softening attitudes and perception from children and, and folks uh, really has shown an increase in marijuana use. And I know someone said that that's not true. This isn't me. This isn't one party or the other. This is the, the Office of National Drug Control Policy under multiple administrations. Shows a chart here that, that shows as the perceptions go down, the use goes up. As the perceptions that marijuana is harmful or not harmful, as the perception that it's harmful goes down, use goes up. Increase the availability by legalizing it, uh, and you are going to have, uh, it's so much easier for kids to use uh, and, and adults to use. A lot more people are going to be using it, and I think uh, there's going to be a lot more uh, impact on our uh, country. Uh, the National Association of Drug Court Professionals uh, made findings, and the, the studies are attached, I believe, to what I gave you, I have a second set here. Uh, marijuana use during adolescence is directly linked to the onset of major mental illness, including psychosis, schizophrenia, depression, and anxiety. Uh, as, as everyone also knows, a little apathy and, and less enthusiasm and motivation. Uh, the use of marijuana triggers relapse to other drug court participants uh, in substance use treatment. Uh, and so, you know, they're very strong about even if you're in a state where they try to legalize this in some way, you need to make sure that your people who have other addictions aren't exposed to marijuana because it's going to cause huge problems for them. Huge problems for them. And we've certainly seen in other countries, and Amsterdam's an example, um, where uh, they're now starting to change their positions. The International Narcotics Control Board said this in 2005, cannabis is classified under international conventions as a drug with a number of personal and public health problems. It is not a soft drug as some people would have you believe. There's new evidence confirming well-known mental health problems. Countries with more liberal policies toward cannabis are reviewing their position, and other countries who haven't done it already uh, need to take a strong stance against cannabis use. Uh, it's coming from an international organization. Uh, Amsterdam has tried to do a rollback. The crime that they've seen come in with the tourists coming in to use drugs uh, is tremendous. One of the other things they noted uh, in Amsterdam with their coffee shop is that marijuana from the time that uh, uh, some of others of us might, might have been younger, uh, or in the 60s. They have people who are tourists who, who go to Amsterdam to smoke uh, uh, marijuana, where the coffee shops were permissible. It's so much more potent than when they were in college uh, that they um, sometimes pass out. Uh, and the bartenders supposedly call it, uh, they refer to the tourists as whitey. It's the, as their face gets ashen right before they go down. But Amsterdam's had crime with people coming in, and you all probably know what they talked about is saying, well, we're still going to allow it decriminalize it, but only for people who are citizens.
because they don't want that tourist trend to come in. And I hope we aren't going to create a situation where people in all the neighboring states can be tourists to smoke marijuana to come to New Hampshire because we're the legal spot and we become the local answer. I really would hate to see that. And I think that would be a mistake. Uh, the studies that I passed around also uh, uh, formed the opinion uh, that legalization would further burden the criminal justice system, and that's the opposite effect of what the legislative intent uh, mentions. Uh, it increases the use of the drug, consequently the harm it causes, adding to the burden on the criminal justice system. Arrests for alcohol-related crimes, such as violations of the liquor laws, public drunkenness, and driving under the influence, totaled nearly 2.7 million in 2008. Marijuana possession arrests under current laws in 2008, around the country, it's very different here, was 750,000, and they think that, again, that it would be comparable if we, if we do that. The other stated purpose, enhancing revenue for public purposes. And people speculate what revenue can be expected, and do we know? What will be the cost associated with administering the program for reviewing and issuing licenses? Who will police uh, whether or not the taxes are being paid, whether or not the licenses are being obtained? Uh, will criminal drug dealers pay the tax? Uh, no, of course not. Will they now be able to grow marijuana under cover of protection that it's legalized when they're doing it just in New Hampshire? Yes. Uh, and states, other states, and I'll just pass this around for you to look at, um, other states that have medical marijuana, people who were criminal growers of medical marijuana now have a little cover. Uh, but what do they do? They pack up bags and bags of marijuana, put it in a bag that they stamp for medicinal purposes only, and where does it end up? In neighborhoods in New Hampshire. And that's from May of 2012, those photos. Uh, pounds and pounds and pounds. So legalizing New Hampshire creates a cover. We'll create, in fact, an industry of criminals who are going to try and grow here to ship to our neighboring states. Attorney Green, I know you're conscious of the time that we've been here with this, and so I, I would, you didn't put down how long you wanted to speak on the uh, on your card. I oh, and I, I apologize for that. My other card I put down uh, 10 minutes, I didn't really think I was adding more money. And you, will you be speaking on all three bills separately, or is one? Uh, I guess with time permitting, I may not have time to be here for the other bills, but I'll, I'll, I'll jump to a couple things that were the points people brought up. Thank you. And uh, one of them was, um, what happens with the federal government? Uh, and has anything been challenged uh, when there's a state that hasn't uh, legalized? Gonzalez v. Raich is 545 U.S. 1. It's a 2005 case where someone was prosecuted and they tried to defend themselves uh, in, in the federal case by saying, hey, I was doing something that was legal under state law. Uh, and the U.S. Supreme Court said, no, you can't be shielded from the Federal Controlled Substances Act by a state law. And, and that's pretty well established. Arizona. Uh, March 19, 2012, they tried to put something in place for uh, medical marijuana, which, much as this uh, bill proposes, involves state workers to be part of licensing. Uh, and they were concerned about it, the Attorney General in that state, and the Department of Justice, through the U.S. Attorney over there, uh, told them that they would vigorously enforce federal laws against those who operate and facilitate large marijuana production facilities, such as those that are described uh, in this bill, um, even if they're for medical purposes or any other purpose. Uh, and they said, that state employees who participate in the Arizona Medical Marijuana Act are not immune from liability under the Federal Controlled Substances Act. And so while President Obama's first term said, and there was that, I think the Ogden memo came out saying that they weren't going to put a lot of resources into this, uh, as time went on and they saw some of the problems, they've been sending letters to the different states telling them, you know, you're in trouble. Plus, they've, they've raided some of the places that are growing some of these uh, things and, and abusing the system. Um, just a couple other points I want to make. If I met. Um, in terms of other, there are plenty of other studies that show that marijuana use is more acceptable uh, among the teens since we've seen uh, this happen and the perceptions go down. But in Colorado, uh, there was a study in an area that said since the dispensaries, the pot shops were open in that area, that the arrests for marijuana intoxicated driving increased 53%. So when in time we're trying to keep our roads safer and, and deter conduct, and, and drinking and driving, obviously there are a lot of problems associated with alcohol, we're trying to deter that. Um, Let's not go in the other direction and present more of a hazard for folks with, with marijuana. And again, all those things are going to uh, have the opposite effect of what I think are the stated purposes to have less of a burden on the system. I think it's going to be a greater burden on the system. It's going to cost a lot of money in terms of uh, the um, uh, cost for health care, mental health care, and so forth. And you compare it to the revenue that comes in uh, for, uh, from the alcohol taxes versus what the cost on society uh, comes from alcohol abuse. Uh, we wouldn't come close uh, if, we, if we tax uh, marijuana to death for what it's going to cost us as a society. 
Questions for County Attorney Reed? Thank you very much. Thank you. We're down to our last five.